Yeah, yeah. And, and I think all this, like, like this whole discussion as you're raising these questions and showing these various uh, ways that stories are told, because different writers are wanting to tell a certain story, like we're wanting to share a certain history. Um, we have our own motives for doing so. But all of this can sometimes make us feel like, well, how can I trust anything in the Bible? And I know you're like cautioning against like, well, those don't throw everything out. That, that those types of stories, like I talked to my wife about it. Sometimes there's like obvious narrative and and historical accounts that you can say like, oh, that, that probably happened. Maybe not exactly the way that it's told, but um, I, I get a sense that, that probably did happen in that time. And then there's obviously some fantastic elements that are that are added in that that seem more like they're trying to get a, a point across. And sometimes kind of like navigating that is what makes the Bible so fascinating and beautiful, like as a piece of literature. But then as a as a someone who wants to get spiritual value out of it and wants to trust it as like as being inspired, this is where it just becomes like sometimes very, very frustrating. So there's like this this tension of like, oh, this is like beautiful. And then like, oh, but this part of it is like uh, a very fascinating way of viewing of how something happened. And, and so I guess that's the really hard thing, I think, as we navigate the Bible. <laughs> You put it very well that actually it, it is the difficulty that if we're trying to read it as divinely inspired writing, then all the stuff about the stance of the narrator and that kind of thing, which we talk about in a kind of literary way, becomes a bit disturbing because um, does that not imply that the human narrator pulled the shots decided how the story should be told and where does that leave God? And I haven't got an answer to that really. I, mean, I think that is... The problem in this, as people would say, liberal way of reading the Bible, um, that you end up not being sure where the divine revelation comes in, and, and I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I do know that having started to read the Bible in this way, I can't read it other way, mm. and I can't, I can't block all this off and start saying, well, it must all be true because God says so, because because He doesn't actually. I mean, there, there, there are very few places in the Bible where we're told God said this. That some of the prophets, like, you know, thus says the Lord. But the history books, like Samuel, are not told under any rubric that says God caused this to be written down at all. It's later theories that make, make it into divine revelation. But yeah. what, what, what then is remarkable, if you, if you come at it from a more literary point of view, is what good literature it is. I mean, the stories of Saul and David particularly are amazingly well told stories in a world from which we have very little narrative of that quality. I mean, you, you've got to go to Greece and Homer to get anything comparable in terms of narrative skill. And then you've got the strange thing that in the Bible, the narrative is in prose, whereas the norm in the ancient world was to write these things in verse. But the, the narratives in the Old Testament are written in prose. So in that sense, they are more like modern novels or stories. Um, and it's, it's very, very puzzling how they achieved that so early on in their tradition and actually constructed such amazingly well-told stories. And I begin to say, isn't that a kind of inspiration? I mean, I think from the other, from the other end, as it were, um, how did they get so good at writing that kind of material? But then you can say, well, all poets have a kind of inspiration, if you like, um, but we don't say what, what you know. William Wordsworth was actually inspired by God necessarily. Mm. But uh, there is a kind of certain difficulty in seeing it just as a purely human product. And it's so good. Yeah. And in the Bible, we get a mixture. We get we get some poetry. We get some uh, fascinating stories and tales that it's those kind of stories that in the oral tradition would get passed on because they're so fascinating. And I think that was kind of the point, right? You're trying to tell a story. Well, how can I make this one? Go longer. Well, I got to make it interesting. I got to maybe add some yeah. some detail to make sure that this this is an important story. If I just add a little more elements to it, it'll make it more interesting for the people to pass I it on. Agree. That's right. Yeah. And of course, in what gets added are things like what two people said to each other when there was nobody else there. And you can say, well, I mean, the inspirationist answer is, well, the author knew that because God told him. But from a more secular right. point of view, you say to say to yourself, well. He can't have known that you know, David said that to Bathsheba or whatever it may be. Um, it, there was nobody taking it down. Uh, it must be a piece of novelistic invention in a sense. 
Uh-huh. And it somehow he's captured the kind of thing David would have said. Uh-huh. You know, in a biography, when you have things that the person didn't actually say verbatim, and yet it's completely consistent with the character or drawing, they would have said that kind of thing. Yeah, I, th- I think you mentioned something like that about how, like, whenever we even read, like, biography, like, biography or history, like, we're trying to take the main bits of what actually happened, but we're not going to know the details of how that thing happened. Yeah, that's right. I mean, with David, you know, there, there's been a lot of interest in a little fragment that was discovered a while ago talking about the House of David. And people said, ah, obviously there was then a real David. But it doesn't follow from that that he did all the things the books of Samuel say he did. Just that there was such a person. And I don't think anybody much as well people have in recent times to speak of there was really was a David. But most biblical scholars have always assumed there was a day that he was king of Israel and he did some of the things that the Bible says he did. Um, and in a sense, this little fragmentary text, if it's authentic, confirms that there was a house of David in Jerusalem. Well, and in that case, fine. But it doesn't substantiate the whole story. Um, no, you're not. I mean, if in hundreds of years' time, Someone discovered a little uh, inscription which mentioned Winston William Winston Churchill. It would confirm there was a Winston Churchill. It wouldn't tell us that all the things that his biographers have told us are true necessarily. And you can't uh, extrapolate from one to the other. But I think um, you know, the story of David is a well told story about a real person. That's about as far as one can get.